welcome students to this section in which i'll be talking to you about transcription so before we go to transcription proper let us have a brief recapitulation about the different types of rna now which are the various types of rna what is rna rna is ribonucleic acid polymer of nucleotides nucleoside monophosphates linked by phosphodiester bonds compared to dna rna is single stranded smaller contains ribose sugar uracil instead of thymine different types of rna hnrna mrna rrna trna snrna so let us look at the first one hnrna what do you call this heterogeneous rna heterogeneous nuclear rna this is also called as the primary transcript this is the first transcript got from dna this is further process to form mrna it contains the introns and the exons so the second is mrna please look at this slide messenger rna they are nearly 10 to the power of 5 different species it forms 2 to 5 percent of the total rna if you are under the misconception that mrna forms a bulk of rna then you are wrong it just forms 2 to 5 percent of the total rna it forms the template for protein synthesis it contains the codons that is why it can act as a template for protein synthesis. It has a cap and a tail. We'll talk about this tail and the cap later on. It is called messenger. Why? Because it carries the message from whom to where? From DNA to the protein translating machinery, to the protein synthetic machinery. That is why it is called as messenger RNA. Now the third type of RNA, tRNA, transfer RNA. It is an adapter molecule. Adapter. Have you seen adapters? The ones which you, you want to change from a, a square plug to a round plug, etc. You have adapters which help them to differentiate between one type to another type. So in this, it can bind to amino acid at one place and RNA at the other. So it understands the code of the nucleic acids and it can also knows the language of the proteins so both the code and the language is known it can translate so that is a typical 3d structure known as the clover leaf structure or the clover leaf model this is a characteristic feature of trna there are nearly 60 different species of trna are present nearly 60 different species of trna are present it has a anticodon arm, it has a variable arm, it has a T C arm, it has a DHU arm, it has a 3 prime at the level of the 3 prime, it has a CCA ending. So all these are the characteristic features of tRNA. Now let us look at the fourth RNA that is rRNA, ribosomal RNA. This is present in association with protein subunits of ribosomes so protein plus R rRNA becomes a ribosome subunit how many uh, ribosome subunits are there depending upon their sedimentation cofactor we will have 20, uh, we have different 60 s 40 s like that we have to write it as smaller Swedberg's co coefficients and we have different ribosome subunits now in these ribosome subunits we have rRNA in eukaryotes there are four types that is 28s 18s 5.8s and 5s what does that s stand for s stands for Swedberg units basically it depends upon their uh, capacity say ultra centrifugal uh, capacity based on that we have got these Swedberg units in prokaryotes there are three types 5s 23s and 16s what do they do these rRNAs they help during protein synthesis they bind to the mRNA they also have more than that they also have enzyme activity remember ribose rRNA are examples of ribozymes they catalyze formation of peptide bond between amino acid these are the ones which form the bulk of RNA 80 percent of the total RNA come from rRNA so that is a don't be under that misconception that mRNA are the most abundant species of RNA of RNA abundant species is rRNA now one more type of RNA is snRNA also called as small nuclear RNA now they are usually in associated with proteins to form snRNPs that is small nuclear ribonucleoprotein uh, complexes also called as SNRPs. SNRPs are important in splicing. 
प्रोटीन प्लस एस एन आर एन ए फॉर्म्स नर्व और एस एन आर एन पी दे हेल्प ड्यूरिंग स्प्लाइसिंग वेर इन ट्रॉन्स आर रिमूव एंड एक्सॉन्स आर स्प्लाइस्ड और ज्वाइंट टूगेदर दे हेल्प इन द कन्वर्टिंग द प्राइमरी ट्रांसक्रिप्ट इन टू द एम आर एन ए एच एन आर एन ए टू एम आर एन ए सो नाउ लेट इस गो विथ दिस ब्रीफ बैकग्राउंड अबाउट ऑल द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ आर एन एस लेट इस लुक एट हाउ ट्रांसक्रिप्शन इज वॉट इज ट्रांसक्रिप्शन हाउ वॉट इज यू मीन बाय दैट सो द फर्स्ट पार्ट वॉट इज ट्रांसक्रिप्शन द सिंथेसिस ऑफ आर एन ए फ्रॉम डी एन ए यूजिंग द डी एन एज अ टेम्पलेट इज नोन एज ट्रांसक्रिप्शन सिंपल वर्ड्स द सिंथेसिस ऑफ आर एन ए मॉलिक्यूल यूजिंग डी एन ए स्ट्रांस एज अ टेम्पलेट so that genetic information can be transferred from the dna to the rna is transcription so what is the similarity between replication and transcription both the processes use dna as the template that is the similarity always they are adding for uh, nucleotides when you are adding nucleotides there is a phosphodiester bond formation so dna is synthesizing deoxyribonucleotide and polynucleotide rna also there is a polynucleotide formation but only thing is it is a ribonucleotide uh, but phosphodiester bonds have to be formed in both the cases both of them occur from the 5 prime to 3 prime direction always remember it is a 3 prime hydroxyl group where one more phosphate can come and attach so it is always the 3 prime so 5 prime to 3 prime is the uh, direction of synthesis now what is the differences between replication and transcription if you look at replication the template both the strands of the dna are going to act as templates each strand has to act as a template for the uh, so that the daughter cells will get a semi conservative model both the daughter cells have to get the one strand of the original dna whereas in uh, transcription it is only one strand which is going to act as the template if you look at the substrate it is deoxy ntp this is ntp does replication require primer yes we already saw that replication requires a rna primer whereas transcription does not require primer the enzyme is dna polymerase here the enzyme is rna polymerase the product is a double stranded dna during replication here it is a single stranded rna if you look at the base pairs it is always atgc here it is au ta or gc is there any selectivity no in replication the whole of the genome whole of the dna has to be replicated whereas in transcription it is only the certain portions of the dna which are going to be transcribed what do you call these portions which are going to be transcribed most of them are the genes which are present so only certain areas of the genome are transcribed has the replication whatever a product formed undergone post process modification no there is no such thing called as post replication modification but there is a lot of things called as post transcriptional modifications so a lot of post transcriptional modifications take place so now let us look at the prerequisites what is required before transcription takes place so the whole of the genome needs to be uh, needs to be replicated but only a small portion of the genome is transcribed we kept that very clear that it is only a small portion so when is this small portion what are the things which regulate it we'll talk about it in gene regulation but most of the time it is in response to development requirement physiological need or environmental changes those will tell you tell the gene okay it is time to be transcribed and transcription takes place now the dna regions that can be that can be transcribed into rna are called genes so remember that all rna that is transcribed is not translated all the rna that is transcribed need not be translated for example you have the trna that also has to come from dna rrna is also have to come from dna so all these rrna trna are not going to be translated it is only the only the mrna which undergoes translation so what is the template for this which is the template now the template strand which is the strand from which the rna is actually transcribed the template strand is a strand from which the rna is transcribed it is also termed as the anti cell strand so you have the dna out here 
Now, in the DNA, one of the strands of the DNA is going to act as a template. It is going to act as a template. If this strand is acting as a template, what is this called as? What is this called as? This is called as the antisense strand. Antisense strand because it is acting as a, a template. Why it is called antisense? Why not sense? The sense is here. Okay. The senseful strand is here, which is and the RNA that is formed, the RNA that is formed will have the sequence same as that on the sense strand. So that is why if this RNA is having the same sequence as that on this strand, this strand becomes a sense strand, this strand becomes the antisense strand and that is the one which is going to act as the template. So the coding strand is the strand whose base sequence specifies the amino acid sequence. So the sense strand is also called as the coding strand. Why? This sequence, this sequence is specifying which amino acid is going to come. Not this sequence. It is this sequence which is going to specify which amino acid could, is going to come. So this is the coding strand. This is the sense strand. So it is also called as the sense strand. So, if you, uh, there is one term called as asymmetric transcription. What do I mean by that? Now, only the template strand is used for the transcription and the coding strand is not. That we are clear. But the both the strands can be used as templates. Now, why do I mean it? Now, in one gene may be present, may be present on this, on this strand. But at the same time, another gene may be present at this strand, in this strand. So what will happen when you are talking of transcription? Remember the synthesis is always from the 5' to 3' direction. This is the synthesis that is taking place. I will show the direction. This will be direction in this direction. But the other RNA which, for which this is acting the template, this will be the direction. Again, we are talking of 5' prime to 3'. Prime. Synthesis is always from 5' prime to 3'. Prime. So, when this is happening, this will be the 5' prime end, this will be the 3' prime end, and this will be the, again, 5', prime. this will be the 3', prime, and this will be the 5'. Prime. So, what is happening? This is, uh, RNA transcription is occurring in this direction. This RNA transcription is occurring in this direction. So, Whenever there is transcription happening like this, you call it as asymmetric transcription. Both the strands can be used as a template. For this gene, this is the antisense strand. For this gene, this is the antisense strand. It is as simple as that. But the transcription direction on different strands is opposite. And this feature is referred to as asymmetric transcription. So I have a question for you. Just look at it. The base sequence of the primary transcript is identical to the coding strand, template strand, antisense strand. What do you think is the answer? Primary strand. Did you answer coding strand? Then yes, your answer is correct, but not completely correct. Why? Because instead of T, there will be U. So, the primary transcript will resemble this. The, it will resemble the coding strand, but instead of T, there will be U. That is the difference. So it is complementary to the template strand. We know what is the template that is required. Now let us look at the enzyme. What are the features? The enzyme is RNA polymerase. This is also called as DNA dependent RNA polymerase. Now there is a difference in the prokaryotes and eukaryotes. The prokaryotic RNA polymerase is a multi, multiple subunit protein of approximately 480 kD. The eukaryotic have three kinds of RNA polymerase, each of which is a multiple subunit protein and responsible for the transcription of different RNAs. So let us look at the enzyme, the prokaryotic RNA polymerase. Now the holo enzyme of RNA polymerase in E. coli consists of five different subunits known as two alpha subunits, one beta subunit, one beta prime, one uh, sigma subunit, one epsilon and one sigma subunit. Now the core enzyme is without the sigma unit. With the sigma unit, it becomes a core uh, complete enzyme, holo enzyme. 
So let us look at the RNA polymerases of E. coli. What is the function? You have the subunit alpha which determines the DNA to be transcribed. Beta catalyzes the polymerization. Beta prime binds and opens DNA template. Sigma recognizes the promoter for synthesis initiation. Now this is all for the sake of MCQ that I have given it here. Please kindly go through the different subunits and their functions. Now let us look at the clinical importance. Rifampicin is a therapeutic drug for tuberculosis. We know that and can bind specifically to the beta subunit of RNA polymerase and inhibit RNA synthesis. So thus it prevents bacterial cell growth. This Remember this drug does not bind to the RNA polymerase of U carriers and therefore it is not harmful to the body's own tissues or it does not cause any damage to the transcription of uh, the normal eukaryotic cell. Now let us look at the eukaryotic RNA polymerases. Now there are three types. There are RNA polymerase 1, 2 and 3. Just like DNA polymerase 1, 2 and 3 is there for prokaryotic DNA replication. RNA polymerase 1, 2 and 3 are there for eukaryotic transcription. What is, uh, whereas for prokaryotic uh, for prokaryotic transcription, we have only one RNA polymerase which has got multiple subunits, two alpha, beta and sigma units. Now, each of these RNA polymerases in eukaryotes has a different function. Now, RNA pol 1 is responsible for the synthesis of 28S, 18 and 5.8, 8S RNA. RNA POL2 is a precursor for mRNA or hRNA. POL3 is for tRNA, 5S and some small nuclear RNAs. So that is the difference. Again, please look at this from a MCQ point of view. They may be asked. So here are the differences. RNA polymerase 1, 2 and 3. What are the products? And there is something called as sensitivity to amantin. Amantin is something which is present in mushrooms and it is a specific inhibitor of RNA polymerase out of which RNA polymerase 2 has got high sensitivity to amantin. So now let us go further. Transcription. How what, how to recognize the whole of the genome, such a big genome, how to recognize where to start the transcription. So recognition of the origin. This big genome, how to recognize the origin. Now each transcriptable region, each transcriptable region is called an operon. So whatever gene plus with its regulatory portion is called as operon. Now, one operon may look, include several structural genes, several structural genes and upstream or downstream regulatory sequences. So, there must be some along with the gene, there must be some regulatory substances also may be upstream and these regulatory sequences plus the structural genes together constitutes the operon or regulatory regions with the structural regions includes the operon. Now, the promoter is the DNA sequence that RNA polymerase can bind. It is a key point for the whole transcription control. So, we need to have an area where the, where we need to have an area on the DNA where it can be recognized, where to start. So, we need to have a uh, certain area. So, this area where the RNA polymerase can go and bind is called as a promoter and binding of the promoter that is a key point uh, transcription control. Now this, uh, before we go ahead the transcription start site is plus one. There is no zero site and bases towards the left are assigned negative sign and they are called as upstream bases and below that you call it as downstream bases. So let us look at the promoter region in prokaryotes. Now, uh, as I said, it depends on the upstream and downstream. So if this is a transcription start site, this will be plus one, plus two. It keeps on going like this. DNA keeps on happening like this. This will be plus one. There is no zero. So if you go in this direction, negative in this direction, at the minus 35, at the minus 35, so many base pairs later, at minus 35, there is a particular site known as a sequence which is called as 
TTGA CA sequence and this is the recognition site and the binding site for RNA polymerase. Now at the minus 10 region there is one 5 prime TA T8 AT box and this is the region at which a stable complex between DNA and RNA polymerase is formed. So we have two regions one is at minus 35 and the other is at minus 10. Now at this minus 35 it is going to recognize it is going to recognize just go and recognize but by the time it comes here it is going to form a stable bond between RNA polymerase and DNA. Now by convention the regulatory sequences are designated in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. Always we say by 5 prime to 3 prime sequence on the non-template strand. On the non-template strand. So we'll look at the further production, what is happening, what is the transcription in prokaryotes, what are the further things we'll look at in the next session. Thank you.